Halo Reach is so good, and it's a shame that it took me this long to actually play it. Step back, ladies! I'm forklift certified! Oh, oh shit! I think my ankles are broken. Recently, I bought the Master Chief Collection thinking I wasn't really going to make any videos on any of the games in there. But then Kermit said that he had it as well, and after discussing when to start, we became the strongest soldiers God could have made with a collective IQ of a brick. My god, playing this game is like being a diabetic kid in a candy store. So follow me like I am Willy Wonka as I show you the magic of Halo Reach's campaign. Understand real quick that there will be no talk of the actual multiplayer PvP stuff uh, since we only played the campaign. We did this mainly because we wanted to focus on the campaign and on top of that it could potentially make at least one person mad, so that's a bonus. And second, be patient with us, we haven't played a Halo game ever, so if we fuck up the precious names you have, then I am not sorry. Okay, with all that said, Halo Reach has no right being this fun. Holy shit, man. Forget these weapons. <laughs> forget all of them, okay? If there's a pile here, forget all of them. Okay, melee everyone, including teammates. Is this... Please, if he calls out that he's about to die, please just shoot him in the back of the head with a pistol. <laughs> Take a look at all these weapons. Look at this arsenal at your disposal. I need you to understand that every single weapon here is designed to give people PTSD, okay? This is pure imagination and PTSD field weaponry. It's perfect. It's even more perfect when you put two dumbasses with the super strong weapons. Uh, Colonel, where, where did you find these new squad members? Uh, they got released from a mental institution on good behavior. W was that the best choice? I see them looking at the rocket launchers with uh, a little too much excitement. Just make sure the objective gets completed. Over and out. Oh, sorry, Colonel. Wait, no, Colonel, please. They're, they're currently threatening Cat. Don't forget the greatest weapon of all. Your allies. Let them take the beating for you while you cower in a corner hoping you don't get your ass penetrated by a grunt with no sense of self-preservation. I see a suicide grunt. He's dead. Oh. Oh, man. This story tends to escalate your situation quite quickly. Like at the start, it's finding a lost patrol. But then it goes into fighting beings you have, who have apparently been eating uranium to bulk up at least a mission later. Don't worry, you'll see more of these bodybuilders later. But we can't get too far ahead. Remember, we have a patrol to find. And I promise that threatening the locals is needed to achieve this. Shoot the civilian! We learn later in the mission, after having done a genocide on creatures with a different belief system than us, that the creatures we have just ended are something unimportant called... Let me check my notes here. Uh, the Covenant, which I'm sure is not that big of a problem. They're, they're not that important, I think. Let's go over everyone you'll be working with. This is the commander of Noble Team, Carter. He is a charismatic asshole who does not like anything but focusing on the mission at hand. We don't like Carter. Next up, Cat. Cat is the brains of the team, knowing anything and everything to do with tech, which usually causes her to try and access information she isn't supposed to, or leads her to hearing shit she shouldn't. But we can't be too mad at her though. She does have a fat ass, according to Dusty. Moving on, June is next, and he is the resonant sniper of the team. He mostly tells you not to fuck up on a single mission he's in, and then goes to drink at a bar for the rest of the game. Next up on the chopping block, Emile, an asshole who doesn't give a shit about anyone. And while I'm allowed to be hateful towards him, he also has one of the coolest helmet designs out of the entire team, so he's gonna get a pass. And finally, and most definitely not least, we have the best character in all of Halo Reach. Say hello to Sha- George, a 7 foot 4, 320 pound super soldier, who while being the fucking biggest, is also somehow the kindest. This man is the reason I got invested into Reach. This big fucker also gets to do the same thing that every other character does. And spoiler warning for those unlucky enough to have not played. Everyone dies. Ev everyone. But like I said though, June just kind of pieces out and doesn't give a shit. Remember son, dying is gay. Yes father. And that leads to the story of Reach. And specifically, Noble Six character you later realize 
has a presence on the team, which forces all his teammates to be on suicide watch. Because my god, every single person ends up losing their free subscription to life. Except for June, he's built differently. But everyone else dies. And so here's my rundown of the story with some autism-fueled mischief. We arrive and get told by Carter instantly that we aren't allowed to do any more lone wolf type shit. Little does he know, he will be eating those words in about six hours. We arrive at a completely new location, looking for a boss patrol. We do find them, as well as some dead civilians. Shaq, I, I mean George, talks to a woman for the first time and scares her. We are told that some unimportant species known as the Covenant are on reach, and thus we are ordered to go and protect the internet that they are trying to take down. So we're transported to where all of our sacred sites that all us men use on a somewhat weekly basis. We are told that it's currently being attacked and that we need to help the US Marines that are already on the defensive. So to help, I grabbed a Barrett 50 cal sniper rifle and proceeded to kill every organism, friendly or not, just to make sure that Kermit lives. And by the way, this sniper is fucking massive. Like, absolutely just behemoth size. Don't worry though, because if you're wanting to show the enemy why taxpayer dollars go to the military and not healthcare, an orbital strike is given. And from it comes the wishful thinking of healthcare actually working. Don't you fucking run away from me! Ow! Once the power is back on, we fight two light snacks for Peso, and then start climbing the North Tower. But don't worry, in this timeline we have rocket launcher defenses, so the tower survives. For now. We then get guided through a stealth mission by June, and by guided I mean he tells us not to screw up the mission at the start, and then doesn't talk to us for half the mission. But that's fine, because me and Kermit are stealth professionals. Shit. It went so bad. It went so bad he turned around at the wrong moment. <laughs> Alright, we're going loud. We met up with June so that we could collectively tell the enemy to get bent. And so we chose to delete their internet in retaliation because ours now works. Say goodbye to Cornhub, motherfuckers. I chose to do plan A initially, which was to use a forklift. It didn't do anything. So plan B is now in effect, which is just throwing freedom at the enemy. They didn't like that. There's some queso impersonators at us, which I promise were easy. Come on, fucking hologram, save us. Oh god, I killed you, I'm so sorry. We take down the alien internet and then learn that they were so upset at losing the tentacle section of the internet, they amassed an army ready to shove energy dildos into our assholes. And so we are ordered to retreat to a safer location to prepare our asses. The day starts and the battle unfolds inside this giant masterpiece of a set piece. During this, we take a turn towards the bridge from the PewDiePie incident, which after all these years, finally had enough and decided it was going to make it our problem. Once we awake from our dream of eating ass and skating fast, our vehicle explodes because Cat was driving, and this causes me temporary blindness. To the damaged warthog, oh god, <laughs> never She's mind. Dead. She then says sorry by giving me a grenade launcher, which was wasted instantly. But not to worry, because Noble Six has max charisma, and was able to convince this minor annoyance to drive off a cliff. And like the badass as we are, we died to an explosion. We didn't know what was happening. <laughs> this is great. I love this game. This game functions really well. Like Ow! <laughs> <laughs> but with enough military budget, we can fix ourselves and cause problems for everyone else. Like taking a car to where it shouldn't be. Alright, soldiers. Please make, please make way for the warthog. <laughs> as it slowly, <laughs> yeah. As it just, through. as it slowly just moves forward into an area that it's not supposed to be. We fight high calorie people, and all right, yeah, no, no, no queso joke for you. No, no queso joke because uh, I don't think you deserve one. Don't worry, these ones are Lizzo specific. <laughs> Anyway, we do a little Vietnam flashback tour, and just like in that war, our helicopter was shot down. But George is okay, so it's all good. With his help, however, I proceeded to get murdered in cold blood multiple times. Ah! 
Oh shit! Oh my god! Oh shit! Why? Well, damn! Nice fucking jump, Noble. Control. This Wait, where's is the other one? one. There were two one sixes is down there. You're free to engage. Have a nice day. Copy that, Noble One. We just have to do that two more times. ground units. Frigate three one eight heavy is inbound, and Mac rounds have been authorized. Mac rounds in atmosphere. One way to get their attention. Hang on to your teeth, people. What? What are Mac rounds? That's a Mac round. <laughs> I don't think that's a Mac round. I think that's a shit. Oh, 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 oh. It is a spaceship that is it's a, a real gun. No, no. Somebody tell me this ain't happening. UNSC frigate it's Grafton. Happening. Do you copy? Grafton is dust. We need to get out of here now. The sh oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. Okay. Okay, so the plan is simple. We sneak onto a different ship, plant a bomb on it, then do what the Japanese used to do in World War II. Sounds good, Cat. Let's do it. I hope you brought your swimsuit, ladies, because we're reenacting D-Day. We fight through an advanced bunker where Marines are hanging around, doing fuck all. Better buckle your britches, bitches, because this is a spirit flight and we did not pay extra for anything. That's friendly. Friendly! Friendly! Is this you that I just passed? Oh, there- oh, shit! That's me! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> Whatever. George flies over to a bomb without safety equipment. This is because George is not a pussy. Once we arrive at the ship, we have a quick discussion with the navigation crew and convince them to let us kamikaze the other ship. George arms the bomb and then tells us that all escape routes are completely fucked. Alright, George, so what's the plan? Wanna try and hotwire a ship? To get out of the hangar, uh, maybe we can, uh, I don't know, George, George, what, what are you doing? No. Listen, Reach has been good to me. Time has come to return the favor. Don't deny me this. Wait, what? What? What are you doing? Help. Wait, he's... <laughs> uh, what? George, please no, George. Tell him to make it count. George, no! <laughs> George! <laughs> Just us, just... You were like the best one! Yeah, come on now. You're like the most redeemable character here. George. Uh-oh. George. No. Holy shit. Using plot armor, we survive the fall back to Reach, watching as our handiwork falls from the sky. And while me and Kermit continue the mission to save Reach, we have a new motivation for why. George, you will never be forgotten. We drunkenly stumble to the city of Chicago, seeing that it's just a normal Tuesday. After greeting the local residents, we grab the first AR we see, which conveniently was dropped by one of the civilians. At least I think so. And then we proceed to save every tourist from the average trip to work in Chicago. And while I tell you I was a badass this entire time that never backed down, I want you to ignore this body cam footage of me hiding in a corner from a gravity hammer. And after a quick Vietnam flashback moment where we failed to protect a civilian transport even after everything we did to stop it, I was able to make my own version of Star Wars with the help of a gravity hammer. It's over, Anakin! Ground. Got him. And because Kermit and I are just god gamers, we were able to save multiple civilian transports lying in wait. And only hope we're making George proud. So now, it's time to eat ass and fuck grass. What the fuck? That's the wrong phrase. Who the hell wrote this? And, and whatever. We're here to kick ass and blow bubble gum. And oh, the, okay, the building's already clear. Damn, that was quick. Uh, well, let's... Uh, let's take to the skies once more, making sure that any and all tragedies are avoided. The next location is a nightclub. Why is it a- why a nightclub? Wait, is it a nightclub or is it a bar? I'm gonna go with nightclub. I wonder what kind of women I could- Fuck, it's Lizzo. Regardless, after we clear out Lizzo, sending them to God, we meet up with the rest of Noble Team. You know, the ones that didn't die yet. Hey guys, wanna hear a joke about 9-11? No. Well, damn. Guess that joke won't land. That's close. First glassing. Me too. Damn. All right, cat. 
If you don't want to appreciate my jokes, that's fine, but let's get something through your head. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn, now that's a really cool screenshot. Too bad there's a dead body in it. With Cat now dead, we are down two members of Noble Team. Didn't Carter say something at the start of the game? Me, I'm just happy to have Noble back up to full strength. Shit, cursed us. How could you, Carter? Anyway, our internet is now down and we can no longer access those important sites we all use. What's the actual reason we're here? Oh, oh, we're stealing an ancient artifact that could help win the war. Got it. Okay, so to achieve success in this weird mission we have, we steal the M1A9 American tank and turn the area into a no-fly zone in a matter of seconds. I just got like swarmed. Going underground, we get told by this woman that we are all morons and that we got here too fast and the data for this random AI is still being processed. So to pass the time, we play a little bit of tower defense with the enemy. The door finally opens and Dr. Haybale tells us that this AI has chosen the two dumbest people in Noble Team to carry it. And as I promised Dr. Have Some Faith that I have the AI and will not let it go, in my head I am already imagining that within five minutes from now, I will be dead with this thing lost. But until then, we have to abandon a ship that we stole because the cops found us in possession of multiple stolen substances. We land with the grace of a giraffe being born. Oh, oh god. Oh, god. I think my ankles are broken. And quickly push forward, knowing that we have a mission to complete. Going back to. Or, wait. <gasps> Come here! You fucking moved! We grab the nearest ATV off of a soldier and crash it, leaving it behind because I didn't want to reverse it. So now we're running across the battlefield, hoping we don't get skull fucked. We both forget that gravity exists, and with that, the AI is now dead. Roll credits. And with it, we can rebuild. Just to prove that we were a bad choice for this AI to choose, we decided cover is for the weak and ran headlong into the enemy, ending with me getting my kneecaps taken out by a 12-ton parade float. Ow! I thought those weren't movable. After hiking through the Narrows in Zion, Dr. Robotnik's advanced AI sex toy identifies our assholes as untouched. But don't worry, because we have the power of fucking sacrifice. Holy shit, dude. You're on your own, Noble. Carter out. Carter out. Carter out. Carter out. Carter out. This is slowly getting more and more depressing. We have lost George, then we lost Cat. Now we've lost Carter. After getting my ass handed to me on a silver platter, Oh my god! <laughs> we make it to the drop-off point, making a stand against every person who puts the bowl before the cereal. Remember, we put the bowl last in this household. And as we hand off the AI to the dropship, we turn around to see a mile cost Kermit to crash. Bill! Fuck! No, not again! Wait, what happened? His internet fucking died, oh no. Leading to the coolest freeze frame we have during a death scene. It was during this crash that me and Kermit also figured out that you could actually customize your character's colors. So now, I'll finally finish this game with the drawing skills of a second grader while looking like a shit McDonald ad. Once we pay respects to a mile, we take a fucking Corvette out in a single shot, letting the season of autumn get away. With the seed of autumn safe, we are left with a mission that would make Carter mad. Glad to have your skill set, but we're a team. That lone wolf stuff stays behind. With only two dumbasses left with a final objective that is so impossible that it has been immortalized on the internet. We tell each other our goodbyes. My friend. We're doing this solo. Her an objective. Survive. And fight against those who seek to turn us into Taylor Swift fans. We fought for hours, not letting a single bullet go to waste. Never leaving each other's side, knowing that at any moment we last two minutes. It, it was two minutes. Apparently, in canon, Noble Six fought for several hours, and the longest run of Lone Wolf I could find was 24 minutes without using any exploits or breaking the AI. And with our death, we get the ending cutscene telling us that because of our efforts, we helped the human race survive. Because of our actions, men across the universe would now be able to use the sacred sites once more. And with that, 
Halo Reach ends. I love this game, and I hope you enjoyed my autistic retelling of the uh, game's campaign. I learned a lot during this game, how to save civilians, how easy team killing is when chaos is put in front of somebody, and how to melee a dead body. Yes, quite the experience. I can't help but feel a little sad, however. The tale of Noble Team is one of both heroism, but also great tragedy. Noble Six joins a team and within one month watches as his entire team dies, nearly dying himself multiple times, delivers one of the most important things ever made in the universe, and then with the most badass way to end his career, dies during a final stand where he fights for several hours just to be an asshole to the enemy. With this sacrifice, the war would end only a year later. And that's the kicker. Noble Team would never get to know if their sacrifice actually meant anything. They can only hope. And that there is the saddest part of this game. Wait, June didn't die though. Where the fuck was he?